following presentation of the Daily Mass is made possible by your generous donations to Catholic Television of San Antonio. The Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, listening to God's word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. We are gathered today in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. These are really the tried and true Catholics here for Labor Day weekend, Saturday morning, when you could be heading to the coast, the beach. Hey, wait, we could be heading to the coast of the beach. Oh, well. Um, the coast of the beach, that's sort of the same thing. The coast of the lake is what I meant to say. Oh, well, it was a long week. Um, so as we gather celebrating Labor Day, we'll talk about that in a few days. But we come here to celebrate Gregory the Great. Gregory, a doctor of the church, known for Gregorian chant, and did so many other things for reform through that area. Um, was a, a delegate to Constantinople at some point, and just such a huge impact. So for me, I am going to offer this Mass for Father Gregory, where he was a teacher of mine at Conception Seminary College in Missouri. Then he became Abbot Gregory, and now I don't, I know he's still Abbot Gregory, but he's like the Abbot Primate for all the Benedictines. And so, as Gregory, that we're celebrating today was a Benedictine, and for Abbot Gregory, and for all the Benedictines who have served the church so faithfully over the years, we'll pray for them today. As we come together today, on Labor Day weekend, where actually Benedict wrote about work and prayer together, we pause. Realizing that our life can't be about work, our life can't be about things about this world, but we need to be focused on that next world. And as we come here, we pause, to ask forgiveness for our sins, for the times that we didn't put God first, for the times that we worried about our own selfish, personal desires and didn't trust in God. So let us ask forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the sick, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to show each of us the way to life eternal, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede on our behalf, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love. Through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, endow, we pray, with a spirit of wisdom, those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the flourishing of a holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, learn from myself and Apollos not to go beyond what is written, so that none of you will be inflated with pride in favor of one person over against another. Who confers distinction upon you? What do you possess that you have not received? But if you have received it, 
Why are you boasting as if you did not receive it? You are already satisfied. You have already grown rich. You have become kings without us. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings, so that we also might become kings with you. For as I see it, God has exhibited us apostles as the last of all, like people sentenced to death. Since we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and men alike, we are fools on Christ's account, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clad and roughly treated. We wander about homeless and we toil working with our own hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we respond gently. We have become like the world's rubbish, the scum of all, very moment. I am writing you this not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for I have become your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was going through the field of grain on a Sabbath, his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what David did when he and those with him were hungry, how he went into the house of God and took the bread of offering, which only the priests could lawfully eat, eat it, eat, could eat, eat of it and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath, the gospel of the Lord. The reading today I've run into a few times recently, the first reading, the whole part that when ridiculed, blessed. And as I was driving, I was up leaving Costco and Selma, and I'd made the right turn on the access road, and this car from behind me goes screeching around me, and then gets in front of me and slams on his brakes. And he is yelling up a storm. I thought, well, I did something to upset this gentleman. And so he, he stays in front of me. I'm put my turn signal on, I'm driving like an angel like I always do, 
Okay, no lightning bolts. And just doing everything right, and he's staying in front of me, and he's keeping him at about 55 miles an hour. I have no idea what I did from Costco to that intersection, but I upset this man. And every time I'd see him, I just, I thought, I'm just going to bless him, and I'm going to pray for him. So I do that, and at first I thought, it's just a way to keep from getting caught yelling back at him or doing something that I don't want to get caught. And I know too many people up there. So it really wasn't in a holy effort at first. It was more just trying to be better than I usually am, which I guess is holy. And so I go and I'm, I keep blessing him. And when it was over, and I, he had created enough of a problem that I called 911 and we're going through all that stuff. And all of a sudden, I realized when it's over and I'm done with the phone call, I was still calm. Usually when that happens, when you get engaged in it, you're all riled up. And then that reading goes back to me that when they ridicule you, you bless them. And that whole sense that our relationship, what difference does it make? I have no idea what I did. I didn't do anything intentionally. And yet this person was just irate and he almost caused two or three accidents just to make a point that was useless because I had no I, none of us had any idea what had gone wrong. And the peace that I had. I couldn't change him, although I prayed for him. But we can change the way we deal with it. If I'd gotten upset, it would have made him more upset, and maybe there would have been an accident. But the idea of when we're ridiculed, blessed, became very real at that point. Because we know to pray for those people that are, that are our enemies or are upset with us or whatever else. We know that. But the idea of blessing and asking, not just that God, that they know God's love or whatever we pray for, but to bless them. That whole sense of encouraging and asking a blessing upon them from God, I think brings it to a different level where we can truly comprehend in a deeper sense, it isn't about being right. And it keeps coming back to me these last many months and everything we do, are we sanctifying it or desanctifying it? Every situation we're a part of, is it holier because we were there or did we not make a difference or worse? Did we make it worse? I think when we judge how that is in our life, our challenge is always, are we the sanctifying force? And God is always there for us. The gospel is very clear. God is there for us. David, that whole story, I think it's in 1 Samuel. I think it's in 1 Samuel. We're just going to say it's in 1 Samuel, where he goes into the temple and he gets the bread and he shares that. All those points up all the way from the Bible, from the Genesis through Samuel and on, shows that God, God holds this high standard, and yet he meets us where we are. He doesn't expect us to be perfect. As he'll say in the gospel, divorce is bad, but Moses had to deal with you guys, so I made that okay. It's still not good, but I made it okay because there wasn't an option. I had to meet you where you were. And so with all these things, we don't have to get it right from the start. We just have to be working to get it right. We have to be working to understand what God is calling us to. And we truly have to grasp that reality that God is here for us. And if we ask for God's help and we do these things, we're going to realize we don't have to respond in the ways that we have. We're going to learn new ways of relating with people. And we're going to realize that if we work at making any situation we're in holy or holier, God wins. Double loses, God wins. And we work to bring people together in holiness. And I think that's what both of our readings sort of pull us together to do. And it comes from simple things to the big things. But are we adding God almost as an ingredient in a recipe and making sure it's known by everything in all that we do? With hope in the abundant goodness of our loving God, we bring to him our cares and our concerns. For Pope Francis, may he be blessed with good health in his humble witness to the power of God's love for us. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, may the Holy Spirit guide them in treasuring and protecting God's gift of creation and the lands that produce food for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For the hungry, the poor, and the homeless, 
May God graciously provide for their every need. Let us pray to the Lord. For catechists and all who pass on the faith, may the Holy Spirit fill them with knowledge and wisdom to share God's truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For young people in our faith community discerning a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life, may they be confident in our love, support, and prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they know the peace of the heavenly kingdom with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of mercy, as you call us into communion with you and each other, and you hear our prayers this day, help us as we pray to be more like you and to learn to, to live the faith you have given us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will come for us, the bread of life. Bless to you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Grant our supplications, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For on this festival of St. Gregory, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who has walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, Mike and Gary's auxiliaries, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons and religious, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, remembering especially Tam and McLaughlin, and all, who have died, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Anthony de Padua, St. Gregory, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now can dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now, well, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace God. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Through Christ, the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ, the living bread, that on the feast day of St. Gregory they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And again on this Labor Day weekend, thank you to all of our sponsors who work hard so that they can help us and share in this ministry. So thank you for all that do that. And if you're sitting there thinking, man, school started and it's not what you expected, come try a Catholic school. Or if it's a Catholic school, go talk to your pastor and find out what's going on. But no, if, it's a, if you're in a public school or one of those other ones and it's not going well, come see us. We'll take care of your kids and we'll help form them in this faith, which is so important to our world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news with your lives. Please help this very important ministry to continue by sending a donation to Catholic Television of San Antonio, 2718 West Woodlawn, San Antonio, Texas, 78228, or contribute online at ctsa.tv.